Hey guys, this is Matt Dean here with Dean Family Acres, and as you can see, we're not on our farm, but we've got a good friend from church that uh, was working on his Kubota L 3010, 3010 which is very similar to ours, and uh, he needed to do a head gasket job. So I'm gonna let him just say exactly which engine is in this. Dean Family Acres. The D something. It's a D1503-E, it's a 1.5 liter Kubota engine, so. All right, um, so if, if, you, if you by chance are working on your Kubota and you're not exactly sure because um, he said he did some research and he always looks first for a YouTube video on how to do it, um, he couldn't find one on this specific model Kubota. And I know that I've done, tried to do some research in regards to mine and a lot of times, I don't know what it is about this generation, but you don't find a whole lot. You find stuff about the really, really old ones from like the 70s and 80s, and then you find stuff about the brand new ones that have a bunch of electronics on them. So um, hopefully this will help a few of you out, and if you'll just follow along, we'll be installing the head and the head gasket. After I got the head shifted because I couldn't get to this nut, mm -hmm. I'm going to bolt it on first. So this was a stud, and then those were bolts? Yeah, right here. This dilly goes right onto the side of there. So just, hmm? just do what I'm gonna do. Just do what you're gonna do. We'll, okay. We might talk about it. Let me hold something back. I'm gonna just set it where it goes without the gasket for now so I don't tear it up. And then and we'll pick it back up and slide the gasket under. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I got a brand new water neck gasket here. You just couldn't get to that nut before. Yeah, I had three bolts out and that the nut on the very bottom. Is uh, it behind, is that the water pump? Was it behind the water pump? It was, the head okay, of it. Okay, so you actually couldn't do it because yeah. it was behind the water pump. Right. So here's the nut that you can't get to with the head bolted down. So what you mean now in regards to not putting that casket down because you'd have to work it around, you would tear it up. Yeah. I guess otherwise, unless you pulled the water pump, then you wouldn't have to worry about it, right? What do you mean? Uh, if, you, if you pulled the water pump, then you could probably pull all that oh, on and just yeah. set it down on there yeah. if you were swapping the water pump at the it, same time. There was just no, no point in pulling the water pump. Mm -hmm. So that bolt got tight too sharp, too soon. So I don't know if I should have waited. I'm not loosen it back up. They're not different lengths, are they? Yeah, this one's longer than the other two, but it's much longer, so it's in the right place. Still got it. Yep, it's not. It don't feel good. Yeah, I know it's the right one. You can edit that re bolt out. <laughs> Do that well. Alright, do you need me to fix it up? Maybe you can you can grab it where I'm grabbing it right here. Uh-huh. I'll try to pick this side up. I can probably pick up. Yeah. It's alright to pick up on uh, that. Got a camera. That's alright.
Folks have a dirty looking head. Mm -hmm. They go outside of the valve cover. Uh, these clean ones with oil on them over here. Go inside. I'm just going to kind of put them back. Not in the exact same position, but at least inside and outside. Right. Keep them separated so you. Yeah, this is how clean and shine. Mm -hmm. How long did you say you had this tractor? Almost 22 years. You got a new, didn't you? Yep. Right after T was born, Janet's what Janet said. Is that your reasoning? <laughs> I got a son now and I got to be able to have a tractor for us to ride on. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All this land here needing bush mm -hmm. hogging is the main reason. Got a backhoe attachment that I really didn't need, but it sure was a nice want. Uh, we did that at the same time. Backhoe is one of those things you don't really think you need until you've been around one, and you're like, man. Yeah. Or you want to start digging a trench somewhere or something, and and now nobody wants more backhoe. They want a mini X. Yeah. It's just it's times are changing. I know a few times I had to bury bury a goat or something like that i was like man i wish i had a back hair right now because mm -hmm. you you could scoot with a front end loader but it wasn't wasn't nearly nearly as efficient so i got a um tightening sequence that i downloaded i'll get you the picture and you can put it in the video if you want mm -hmm. And these are reusable head bolts. I didn't recommend. No, I said inspect them. If you could, uh, I forget exactly what they said to look for, but you could tell if they were not reusable. But they've never been taken out. Um, first time the head's been off since it's new, so I didn't suspect any problems with the head bolts, especially since the gasket wasn't damaged the one it was. Mm -hmm. It's not like I had a warp head or anything like that. So. You just checked it with a straight edge or you just kind of figured? I'm just hoping for the best. Huh? <laughs> I'm not really checking it. Well, you could look at the at that old gasket and yeah. tell. Yeah, you could tell that the uh, only compromise was the ring at, at the top of the cylinder where the, it holds the water back on the water jacket. Head gasket has a lot of jobs, you know, it, it separates combustion from water, from oil. So it don't look too complex, but it, mm -hmm. it, pretty, it pretty much is. Seventeen millimeter. These are fourteen here. Fourteen. Yeah. You were spinning too fast for me to be able to read. I was trying. <laughs> I'm going to do a little bit of snugging with before I get my torque wrench out, but bolt pattern pretty much start in the middle, mm -hmm. go to the opposite side, and then, so, back on that one. So, I went there, there, and then you're going to go like 
clockwise and, and then go out as you go around. Okay. Back to this side. And then over here. Next one over. I'll need later, I'm sure. Yeah. Two more. Okay. Remember what the torque value was? Calls for 70 foot pounds. So I'm gonna have to come on that side some just to get to where I need to be. Mm -hmm. So we're just waiting on a hear and a feel on a click there. The click you're hearing is just the ratchet backing up, not the... Hear that? Mm -hmm. One more time. first gifts of tools that Lori gave me when we got married. Torque wrench, huh? Yeah. If the engine had still been running, I would have taken the front end loader off. Mm -hmm. Give you a little more room. Yeah, because it's easy, it's a quick, quick release and all of it. But it works. I think tightening some others down changes the torque on mm -hmm. the others. Does it matter about rotating around again? I don't think this is important on the second go around. Because you shouldn't have to move them much. That's it. It's amazing some of them still got a little more. Probably 
compresses it just a just little bit. Just a little bit enough to, mm -hmm. enough to loosen another one up. Yep. I guess it compresses it like gasket. That's what you're talking about, compressing mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm comfortable with that. Though. I've been around almost three times. So, so that's the head. Um, that's the old thermostat. I went ahead and got a new one since I was in here. So it goes right here. A little groove right there that it sits in. Gasket goes on top. There, this gasket is a little different. It's got a little bump indention. I have no clue. I've been thinking about which way it should go. Hmm. And I've come to the conclusion it probably don't really matter. It has an indention just going one way? Yeah. Let's see, it's dented in. Oh, on the end. Out. Yeah, it probably and there's no go. groove whatsoever in any of the two surfaces. They're both flat. So I do know it goes on top of the thermostat. But, uh, hmm. I don't even remember which way The original did. one didn't have. Mm -mm, it's a different, this is almost like a metal gasket, but that's a, a typical gasket, material gasket. So we're gonna go with it. If it don't leak, we're good. <laughs> if it leaks, I'll probably need to flip it over. Do like my stepdad always said, just hold your mouth right and it'll be just right. Yeah. Or if it won't go, did you grunt yet? That's the other. <laughs> yeah. Can't say how many times I've used that one with our kids either. <laughs> what size is that one? It'll be a 12. Be careful with those bolts, they break easy. They've had so many temperature changes in their life from cold to hot, yeah. cold to hot, that they're vulnerable. So I had to take this clamp loose to get to that one bolt. To get to which bolt? That to one. To that bolt? Okay. Yeah. Just because the way it was sitting. Yeah. Ten's the one I always lose. <laughs> seems like every vehicle I own, ten will take apart half of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that's the running joke on the Toyota groups. Yeah. I'll stop there. I feel like I could keep going, but Yeah, the way that wire is around it, you don't wanna yeah. don't wanna put a hole in it. Alright, so I'm thinking I'm gonna go ahead and put this bar across the uh, glow plugs on next. Might be a little so just harder. Just makes the connection. Yeah, it just connects one, connects all three, and then there's a wire hooks to the last one. Okay. I think it'll be harder to get to with the bow cover mm -hmm. on. Now these look clean. This back one doesn't look quite as clean. Does that matter? Yeah. Wouldn't hurt to clean it a little bit as long as it's bright. See a wire dangling over there with a. Yeah, it's right here. I'm guessing it. Yeah, there's two of them. Go back under. Go back under. There. I was holding them out of the way. So yeah, just need. You got. Don't need this one. But don't need that one yet. Do need this one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that one plugs there. Okay. Where's this one? Just right like right. that. Yep. You want to be careful without that valve cover on. There's some holes there where the valve uh, mm -hmm. push rods go. So. You don't want anything in there. And sorry right, to go ahead and plug this one in. Mm -hmm. That just a temp sensor. Yeah, there's a temp sensor there. Yeah, there's an oil sensor over here. So yeah. That's eight. Mm -hmm. The uh, push rods and the rocker assembly on. Clean that gasket surface a little bit. So spit on your finger to get it extra clean. Yeah, I don't know if you notice what I've done on this box over here. Probably not completely necessary because they should be all done for parts. But to make sure they go back in the same hole they came out of, I put them, laid them out like that. And, okay. and the only reason is I don't really want to adjust the valves because it was running good. I think they're fine. And I believe if I use the same parts in the same place. You shouldn't have to do that. Shouldn't have to do that. And those 
push rods, you're just kind of doing it by feel. Yeah, you can feel. Kind of got a. Yeah, that, there's a um, indented seat that they go in at the uh, camshaft. There's also these little buttons here that go on top of the valves. Buttons? Yeah, that's just a little pressed surface, I guess, with a rocker arm. Instead of pushing directly on the valve, these rotate and spin and probably keep it from wearing out. Hmm. And there's no worry about that because it's got it's pinned on the ends, correct? In regards yeah. to it coming apart or yeah, anything, yeah, you just yeah. want to be careful with it. And if it comes apart, you need to fix that first because yeah. it shouldn't. So make sure those go in the push rods and the others. Just right there. And it's only three nuts that hold that assembly. So these down. have a ball on the bottom end here that kind of fits down. The the end of the push rod is ball shaped. Yeah, and so it fits, it, in it fits into that push rod. Mm -hmm. These torque settings are. I didn't look them up. See that valve pushing down? I got a built in torque wrench in my arm. Kind of got a feel for stuff that don't matter much. I've broken enough bolts in my life to know what they can take. Main thing is even pressure on all of them. It's not like you trying to keep something from leaking with this one tightening up. Right. You know? And this one's 12 millimeter. 12, yeah. All right, valves are set. <laughs> so it's not hard. This is a lock nut mm -hmm. and, a, and a nice uh, flat screwdriver. So with each cylinder on top dead center, you're looking for six to eight thousandths in here. Okay, so you but you don't need to do that because you, well, you don't feel like you need to do that. I don't think I was... changed anything because I put all the parts in the same place. Okay. So, um, now, if you crank it and it seems like it's running. Yeah, if it's, if it's not running good, then I, I was probably the first place I'll look. But um, usually I said six to eight, usually six thousandths on the intake and eight thousandths on the exhaust. That's well I can remember. But anyway, ready for a valve cover. It's got a brand new gasket in there so it's got a got a groove that it goes in i've already installed it you have to lubricate that at all or anything or uh, it... yeah like you would want to on the uh, on the outside yeah. I did. okay so i have a confession there was a there's three brass washers that go under these nuts mm -hmm. and i saw them on there but I tried to pick one loose when I was taking it apart and I couldn't, I said, oh, there's stuff on there, so I'm good. So when I, later I, I looked at it and there was only one washer. You lost them. I found two on the ground, thankfully. <laughs> so that's it right there. It's just, just to help seal for leaks. So you just got a regular one for the other one? No, I found them. You found them? I found both. Oh, you found the other two. Okay, that's yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> Story of my life, dropping stuff. Well, at least you didn't drop it down in something. Yeah. Sure. Sure, there's a torque spec for these two. 
Uh -oh. fit? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, we got an adjustable fuel. That's the reason I had to loosen the tank. I was trying to take the tank off, but the whole console would have had to come out to get it off. So. Would have been a good time to flush it out good, wouldn't it? Yeah. I did get a new filter. It's not here yet. It's compressing that big old rubber gasket down there. That's why it's taking mm -hmm. so much. I think the next thing I'm going to put on is the fuel line. Just because I don't remember what all I had to take off to get to them and I don't want to put too much on and not be able to get all the nuts. Mm -hmm. I do remember this was the last one I had to take loose because the other two were in the way. Mm. So this one, Another one. Yes, yeah, so that's going on first. I don't see any debris in there, so that's good. Um, it's just a flare. There's no, there's no rubber O-ring or anything like that. It's just a flare fitting. So. Start these back ones here. And you're gonna once you get this going, you're gonna have to burp them, right? Yeah. For air. Yeah, it's not. There's a valve right here that helps aid oh, okay. in that. So I've never had any. Well, I don't know how many times I've run it dry. Maybe once or twice, but it didn't seem like it was ever an issue. Even changing the fuel filter yeah. seems it seems to always start back up easy. Yeah, I changed my fuel filter and I never never had a problem on that. Yeah. Don't break it. The wrenches help you help your hand a little bit when you gotta push on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's smooth. Mm-hmm. With a twist in it. Yeah, with a twist, yeah. it's flat, you don't gotta worry about kinda pushing you. The strength the same with them twisted like that? I think so. I think if you're going to bend that wrench, then you probably need a different type of wrench. Well, I know. You know, I have to bring up my license when I have to start tightening up my stuff. So. <laughs> it's a nice long wrench, too. It's got good leverage. Mm -hmm. I remember when I took those head bolts out, I used a 3 8 drive ratchet. And it was pretty, pretty tough, you know. But, yeah. But I'm tough, so. <laughs> it helps. <laughs> intake, which is just an air intake because fuel goes directly into the cylinder. the injectors so. there's no specific side on that gasket it's the same either way it won't go it'll only line way. up there's no, there you go. there's no way for it to go but one way all right i'm gonna try and get a couple bolts in i know it'll be in the right position is this one of those where you need three hands yeah let's see what i did here you know if you need me to hold something. Okay. You know what? What? I may have put the fuel lines on too soon. I'm to get down in there and then re then position the gasket. I think I put it fuel lines Should on. Should put the fuel soon. lines on after. After this. Yeah. Like Give it. you a little more room. Yeah, it was four days ago when I took it apart. So <laughs> hard to remember that far back. I, I mean, I don't know really which way I did it. Cause it went in there. It just wasn't the easiest. It's like doing headers on a hmm. on a car that doesn't have much space. All right. Let's keep 
them away from the fuel line. Yeah. Start that one with a thread. I think this is one of those hold your mouth right situations. Yeah. Not one of them superstitious people that says it's got to be an even number. <laughs> You would think two per cylinder, but mm -hmm. I guess intake it really is. Especially if, since it's just air intake mm -hmm. as well. Of course, you don't want to suck anything in the clean air, do you? No, but from a pressure perspective, you know it's uh, not nearly not going with nearly as much as you would. Oh, there you go. One of them's got a little bit of an angle, I believe. Just start in the middle on this one. This one of those built-in mm -hmm. torque, uh, torque, yeah. torque wrenches. Yeah. Just hose up here. Tank. Got a brand new air filter already. Went ahead and put it in. Maybe all those things you do when something else messes up, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I already had it though. I just had never. Matter of fact, I had oil and filter and everything to change the oil with. So it'd be a good time to use it. No. It's 10, I just didn't grab 10. A couple of hoses. We had one up here, that fuel. Yeah, so one of them goes on this end of the fuel rail, one goes on that end of the fuel rail. And I'm pretty sure the way that one's bent, it goes. Yeah, it looks like it probably does. So this end, I have to come back off because there's a plate that goes here with a hole in it, but. I to can't. be able to slip this back through. Yeah, so okay. I won't put that in on permanently yet. I will, I will do the bottom. And this one was leaking. This reason I clamped it up higher. Clamped it up pretty higher. Is it? Actually, that's an overflow one. So we gotta, I gotta figure out. Yeah, that one go. This goes down to the oil filter. I mean, sorry, the fuel filter. Okay, so it, it goes here on the tank. But like I said, I can't really permanently put it on yet. I think this one might go here. And this one goes on the back of the fuel rail. At least that's what it's looking like. And then there's one that goes under here. This one, I think. Looks like it's bent for that position. So that's about all you can do is guess if you can label it. So these bolts here is for the reservoir bracket. Just kind of got it sitting up out of the way. This here? Yeah. yeah this question here is I don't think it goes that way. A breather tube basically for the crankcase. Goes right there. And it just goes to the ground. Yeah, it just goes by the block there. Yeah. Thought for sure before I inspected this thing good that this uh it's gonna be hard to come off, but it was quite easy for some reason. That gasket was easy? The nuts, breaking uh, the nuts, so it's like you know how you are with exhaust. Mm -hmm. Nuts and bolts sometimes they tend to be hard, but uh, you know what, while I've got room, I'm going to go ahead and hook this alternator 
back up. Without the manifold there. That's why that bolt was longer. Tightened up <laughs> too soon. No. Now we know. <laughs> Hope I didn't damage it. <laughs> it's probably all right. It still ain't tight, so that's why. Makes you feel better. Yeah. Oh, no. I got a set like that and then I got the set that don't swivel because they got a, like a face on them where they won't slip past the head. Yeah. Well, that's one way to do it. I forget how I did mine. Yeah, there's a, that's a lot more precise way to do it with a tension gauge and all. You've probably seen oh, really? belt tension gauge, but you know, as long as it's not squawking, it's tight enough. All it's doing is running off. Water pump and off maybe. Mm -hmm. It feels good. So. Many years of experience on the torque meter. Yeah. Exhaust assembly. It feels pretty clean. Japanese did a good job of this engine. It's been very reliable and easy to work on. I really never heard anything bad about Kubota engines at all. Yeah, you're right. You know, Bobcat uses them in their skid steers. Oh, hey, really? Yeah. Doosan is a parent company. You got one hiding up here in that. Yeah. Yeah. Can you get to it? Yeah, one of them is tough to get loose. Uh, I don't think it was this one because the wrench, the one on the bottom is going to be hard to tighten, but we'll get it. Any particular order on these or kind of work I, each? I try to start in the middle. Okay. Then just move to the outside. This is the one that's hard to get on. I'm gonna have to put a wrench on it in a second. You trying to get it, get this done within your time? You told me. One to two hours. Yeah, well, I think we're at about an hour now. Yeah. Assemblies will take a little longer than disassembly. Just because of all the particulars. Mm -hmm. Well, and remembering, like you said, yeah. you did it four days ago. Yeah. Trying to remember. Hang on a second, why did I do that? <laughs> To get to. Yeah, it is. I had a hard time getting it off, but once it broke it, it was fine. Oops. Sorry, Kim. Okay. Okay. Let's look around. And where's the tachometer pull from? It comes straight through here. Is right. that through a hole in this gas tank? Just straight through the middle of the tank. I guess they were trying to get a shorter core. They probably figured out the cost difference and it yeah, was. Yeah, they welded a tube through the fuel tank. So, um, hmm. I've had that apart before. I did put a clutch on this in this thing. Yeah, I remember you years back, doing so. that. You had this thing complete, had completely split in half, didn't you? Yeah, you have to. Pretty much. Um, I think we should put oil and water in it and crank it up. Tight. 
because you didn't buy that, you didn't splash for that five dollar O ring. Still looks good, don't it? <laughs> Even when I first heard it a few years ago, you didn't think about it. No, I just didn't, couldn't figure out. I, I you said it takes how much? Six. Six. Dipstick. I don't, right there, if you want to no, don't have a eyeglass. It's got no, no eyeglass, but it's got, it's got graduation marks. But I have to get. I must be getting close. Oh. Is it even on the seat? Yeah, not right there. Uh, so let's go what to do. Plus the oil filter. So it can go. Yeah. A gallon left is what I need. I'm real close. I'm gonna say another quart and a little bit. It'd be enough to at least crank it. Mm -hmm. Check it later. It's got coolant. I never unhooked the battery like a <coughs> responsible mechanic. <laughs> right, here we go. This bleed valve on this mm -hmm. uh, fuel pump right there, counterclockwise. Close the back. Let's see. Off would be that way, wouldn't it? That's it's on. I don't even have it hooked up. Sounds good though, don't it? Mm-hmm. Like it's supposed to. I'm happy yeah, with I never even saw any fuel come out. No, I think it's it's like a oh, it's, it's not open to anything except okay. the fuel rail. It just it pumps. Kind of just burps it. It pumps it in a loop. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Low, not too much. Mm. Almost perfect. Now that the oil filter's full, mm -hmm. this will be pretty accurate. Shouldn't be hot enough yet to take this off. Just to see what we got. It's got a good level there, so once it heats up, it'll draw in more from the reservoir if it needs it. Once the thermostat opens up. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to crank it anymore until I finish the assembly, but I know it runs good, so that's important. Mm -hmm. 